Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today's episode is one of the most requested episodes we have across the channel. People comment on my Stephen King top list, my Richard Lehman, my Dean Koontz, so on and so forth. And um, I'm finally going to go ahead and do it. Uh, I was going to wait until I actually recollected some of these books. But I decided to go ahead and do it because the more I think about it and the more I try and go back and read the books or even going to Amazon to find used copies of the books to, or locally to my local used bookstore, I don't even want to pay 2 to $3 for these books. Which is sad. Um, as we get older or as our tastes change, well, as, as we get older, our tastes change. Simple as that. I really loved this author back in the day but nowadays not so much I've tried to pick up two of his books that I enjoyed um, actually one I had never read um, and then another one that I enjoyed in the past and I couldn't finish either one of them so but with that caveat <laughs> or that's probably not even the right word but with, with that said I did love this author's work at some point in time I just do not enjoy it anymore my tastes have changed and I've gone far more to the literary side of things so, that being said, let's jump into the actual list. Today we are talking about Bentley Little. If you guys love Bentley Little, let me hear from you down there in the doobly-doo. If you don't like him especially, let me hear from you because I am of that vein nowadays. Um, if I reread these top re -read these top five books, again, will I like them? I don't know, but I'm kind of scared to at this point. Kind of like with my Richard Lehman faves. So, at number five, we have The Return. This <laughs> this book has one of the oddest, craziest, just absolutely mental endings I have ever read. Um, now, the, the build-up, as with most Bentley Little stuff, is usually just a bunch of weird occurrences, a bunch of weird crap happening, and then a final denouement. But with this one, it is so epic and large in scope, even though it's set, I believe, in just the, the, just the one town. Um, so much stuff happens, um, but another problem with Bentley Little's work is you want to know the aftermath of all this stuff, and he usually doesn't talk about that. Um, next up is one that I actually own two copies of, uh, two book club edition hardcovers, and that is The House. Um, now this is in terrible condition, it's an li old library copy, I also have an old library copy of The Town, which isn't on this list. But uh, this one is the one that's in better condition, and it is in terrible, terrible condition. There's writing and all different kinds of stuff in here because it is a library book. Um, and then you got, you know, the, the checkout thing. But uh, what I remember most about this one, I had so much fun because of the doors um, and the traveling through the houses. Um, I really appreciated that. Um, another thing that really, that, that bothers me now, didn't used to bother me, is... Most of his work just kind of blends together after a while. He has maybe a total of ten characters he uses. He's kind of like Dean Koontz in that aspect, where he has about ten different characters, and those characters kind of cycle out through those through the books. Sometimes, you know, his his oddball character will be, you know, a, a, a friend of the main character or the main character. You usually have a family um, going down. Not a family going down. Woo! A family aspect in the book. Um, usually there's two kids, that kind of thing. Either that or you have a loner, which we'll get to that later. You have a person who is just off by themselves, just having a, having a bad time of things. Next up, this one, I remember enjoying it simply because of the subtext of it. Uh, the store. It's so, no, the store, I'm going to put this stuff up here because I don't actually own this book anymore. Uh, most of these books... I got damaged during a hurricane way back when I was, you know, younger in my, in, I think, my teens, probably around, oh, well, maybe it was the 2000s. Uh, there was water damage. I can't remember if it was Ivan or not, but I've had two different hurricanes destroy books. I had Hurricane Opal and then Ivan, and I can't exactly remember when these things happened, but um, I lost all my paperbacks in just random ass flooding. I had them in a box out in the garage. The garage flooded, and it the same of the story. But with the store, I remember the Walmart um, comparisons. He never actually says Walmart, but you know in the book that this book is about Walmart. Um, and then the uh, the actual villains, um, I remember that very clearly. And it's another one of those really fun stories um, that I've kind of grown out of. 
Um, again, if you guys enjoy this stuff, enjoy this stuff. But these are the ones that I remember the most, um, and I just don't like his work anymore. Uh, next up, we have The Walking, which was a great concept. Um, I have been tired of zombie fiction or mass, whatever, things like uh, 28 Days Later, I and mean, they're not zombies, I think they're what, Rage, Rage Zombie, or whatever, uh, in Cell, Stephen King's Cell, they were phoners. Um, I've been tired of that genre for a long time. I don't know that I ever really liked that genre, but this is one of the most unique mass, uh, I don't even know what to call it, because I don't remember too much about the book, but I do remember getting into it and having a significant love for the main character, because it was him and his father, and this guy was just your average everyday Joe, and it, the, the funniest part is, the thing that sticks in my mind the most is a line where the guy is bored, and he just, just decides to go to bed, but he masturbates beforehand, and Bentley Little writes, masturbated perfunctorily before he went to bed, and for some odd reason, that one line has stuck with me. So, that's an odd aside, so, yeah, hello, demonetization. Anyways, last... Um, but certainly not least, I have my number one pick, which is The Ignored. Um, this book really spoke to me at this time in my life where I was more social and more active than I had ever been in my life, and it, I still felt like I wasn't being seen. Um, and that aggravated me quite a bit, and this is, my, this is probably a little bit per more personal than you want to know. I, I, I always wanted some kind of celebrity. At the, I'm talking about this point in my life, the, my, when I first read the book. I always wanted some kind of celebrity, and I would go on to find a little modicum, my, little, my own little corner of celebrity over here, and I hated every minute of it. Um, even to this day, I see the numbers rising on, you know, the... the I see the numbers rising for the sub count here on YouTube, and it makes me cringe. Um, I mean, we're almost at 4,000 subs. Uh, it drifts off. It's not growing as fast as it was because I stopped putting the uh, the links at the end of videos. I stopped sh putting my videos up on social media, that kind of thing. If you guys are sharing them, it's fine. But it does make me feel weird because I don't want to return to that. And I, at this point in my life, if I were to reread The Ignored, I would probably look over to that character and be like, he has the life. Whereas the first time I read this book, I looked, o I looked over at that character and I thought, he is just like me. So I, that's, that's just personal experience with these, with these works, and that's all these lists are. Um, I'm sure many people will disagree with several things that I have said in this video. Please disagree down there in the comments section. Don't be rude, though, because then I just have to delete you. And I don't want to delete you. I want to have a conversation. Um, but if I, if I disagree with you too adamantly, I probably just won't comment. And your comment will be there for everyone else to read. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. Kind of weird one, too. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!